the Pirate Hunter. And this is part four of the 1955 model kit build, Say Hallelujah, World with End, Without End, Amen. This is the kit here. I'm going to give you a little bit of trivia, a little bit of waffling. This kit here was actually, actually offered as a promotion for a TV series. And one of the persons, or the person that hosted this TV series, went on to become President of the United States. Have you got it yet? The host of the TV show was Ronald Reagan. Went on to become President of the United States. And the name of the TV show was Death Valley Days. Now what they offered as a promotion is this model kit right here. They are, have done a re-release and a remake of it, I understand. And from what I've read, this kit is supposed to be in about 167th scale. Now I actually have three of these. This one here, as you can see, has been opened and I've looked at it. And I have two others that one my grandfather built and one I started to build as a kid in 1955. The one I started to build, believe me, is a six-year-old's build, trust me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a kit review on this and then we'll, uh, I won't get the others out, they're buried in the three totes behind me, they're full of model kits that I can't get to yet. So let's go ahead and get started with this. It come in a plain brown, come in a plastic bag and well that's what I got it in. And it says, from the old ranger, Death Valley, California, to ensure safe arrival of your big 20 mule team kit, it has been packaged in two boxes. This is box number two, and it has the address on it, and when was the last time you see an address label that was typed out on a typewriter? Welcome to the good old days. And this is box number one, same thing. Got my grandfather's name and address where I lived as a kid. Uh, very unremarkable, just the brown box. So let's open it up and see what we got. In this, this kit here, this part of the kit here, is all of your wagon parts. We'll get into that bag a little bit there. That's kind of interesting. Comes molded in a blue plastic. These things weren't attached to sprues when you got this kind of stuff. Just all kind of come in a bag, kind of thrown in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. And as it says here, it says Pacific Coast Borax Company, Division of Borax Consolidated. New York, Los Angeles. And as you can see from being set in the... Let's see if I can get it over here make sure we can see it a little better. I've changed where I put my camera because of the things that are going on with the remodeling. As you can see, the floor is a mite work on it. But we'll get it straightened out. That's the floor of one of the wagons. This is part... Uh, there is some flash on this. Not a whole lot. There are some ejection pin marks, but you know, this is a 1955 kit. It is, looks pretty good. A lot of it has warped. And I think it's because it's been in that bag just kind of jumbled up so long. Now, will I be able to straighten it out and get it to work? Yeah. It'll just take a little bit to do it, but we'll get it done. This is part of, I'm guessing, your brake lever off of one of the wagons. This is a sprue that has a bunch of the hubs. Now this is the brake on it. Where we had them on the other three, the small, that's the brake on that. And these are the hubs, some of the different hubs for the different size wagon wheels on it. The other ones are scattered through here where they've come off. This is the water tank that was on it. Right one? Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, 
I have some minor warpage issues to deal with here. So, I think we'll probably persevere on it. And hopefully, we'll get it to work. Yeah, we'll get it to work. There's, I don't know, I could probably do it, uh, possibly with letting them set in some hot water, maybe. We'll experiment. We'll find out. This is the sides to the wagons. And as you can see, there's a pretty good amount of detail on it. It's right through there. You can see where all the individual boards are on it. Through there. Where all the accessories hook onto the side here, which would be water, uh, tack, things like that. Another side for it. Another side for one of the wagons. They're all about the same. And again, as you look, they're all warped. Now, if you're one of these people that doesn't want to deal with something that's really warped or uh, kind of out of shape, I wouldn't recommend this kit. It looks like it could be a kind of a nightmare to put up mildly on this. You know, like I said, this one's a little warped, but not bad. All the ejection pin marks or whatever I'm finding are all on the inside on it. As you notice so far, we haven't found any directions yet. Hopefully they're in the other box. If not, we've got the other two, that one that was built that I can use as a reference to go back and look at this. It's molded in kind of blue plastic. Like I said, you can see on this stuff, you can see the individual boards in it, and there is, you can feel the rivets down it, or bolts, likely, more likely stove bolts to hold things together on it. Two of the wagon wheels. They are, like I said, pretty good. They've got detail on them. And there is some little bit of ejection pin marks or markings on it of some kind on it. And these are done, if you've seen my video about the cannon wheels down at uh, Fort Douglas, you can see where this has got the splits on it, where the individual sections of wood were put in there to put the wagon wheels together in the hubs. And if you happen to look at the real world weathering tutorial today that I posted, you will see one of these old style hubs, or a couple of these old style hubs, big old wooden ones and how they fall apart when they're not taken care of. Again, like I said, these wagon wheels are all in pretty good shape. They all look Kind of, sort of, pretty much. Well, they kind of look straight. Kind of look flat. What am I getting myself into here? And another wagon wheel. Again, these all have got pretty good amount of detail on them. Uh, the hubs are big on it, which they should be. And as I said, I think I said at the start of this, this is supposed to be, I believe, a 167th scale, from what I was told. Uh, some more of the parts stuck together here. How did that get in there? Don't know actually. Hmm. Okay, there we got it. Another one of the brakes for the uh, wagon wheels. This would be, these are all your triple trees on it. You can see where each one of these has a mule attached to it. Now this one is a misnomer in some ways. Because these were called 20 mule teams, but actually they were 18 mules and two horses. And two horses were attached in the first set of triple trees next to the wagon on it. There is some really good uh, information about this on the web, which I've done some research on. But where I'm doing this and doing the last one of these, when I go to do the build, I will produce, I will post a whole bunch of information on this. This is another one that would be a real interesting build for a civilian road vehicle. Because these things traveled through one of the most inhospitable areas year-round in the United States, Death Valley, California, which has recorded some amazingly high temperatures down there. Uh, 120s, 130s. And for mules and horses and men to survive down there, 
is pretty amazing. This is some more of, I think this would be probably possibly break handles, things like that on it. I said if I don't find any directions in that box, then I'll have to look at one of the others and see what we got on that. This is another one of the frames. It appears to be, something's wrong here, it appears to be relatively straight. Kind of, sort of. So I said, for a kit that's this old, that's been in bags, I mean, you really can't, you really can't knock it. And this is the floor of another one of the wagons here, and same thing on it. It's got a sink mark right across there, but this is the bottom of the wagon, I think. This is the inside of the wagon. Now what you were supposed to do, and on one of the other ones it shows it, we had a, you put a piece of cardboard or something inside there, and you took boraxo soap, or borax, and the powder soap, and you piled it up in it, so it looked like it was moving it in the two wagons. They had two wagons full of it, and the third wagon was the water wagon for the mules and the horses on it. Detail on this is pretty good. It's got a wood grain. There's an ejection pin mark right there, but I think if you smooth it and want to redo the wood grain, it'll work out pretty good. Again, a slight amount of warpage. I won't even mention the warpage anymore. It's not because most of these parts are. One of the wagon tongues. Little sink marks, a few sink marks, and a little bit of... Imagine there's no flash. Just a little bit of sink marks and uh, some ejection pin marks. Nothing really. Nothing to write home to your mother about. You know, there's certain things you should never tell your mother anyway. Uh, they kind of look at you a little strange if you do. And again, one of the water barrels, and it's got pretty good detail on it. You can see the wooden, uh, you can see the bands around it, and the wooden slats, staves, uh, that the barrel was made out of. Another part of a barrel, same thing. It's got the little pin that it goes in to the things on the side of the wagon to set on. This is uh, something to do with something I don't know. Well, I said if I don't have any directions I'll have to dig one of the others out and look at it. This is your pivot where your wagon goes into the wagon tongue where it would pivot. This is a big diorama when you set this out. It is fairly long on this. About, I would guess, probably close to the same length as that M65 Atomic Cannon that I've got. Another wagon tongue, a little bit of sink on it, nothing major. All these parts are all pretty much the same on it. They all look about the same. Now this one, you can see on this, the bolt heads on this. There's some pretty good detail where this, these would have been big blocks of wood that were bolted together to hold them together on this. Where the um, axles fit onto it with the wheels as they went on to it. Going like that, then on the big ones, one of these hubs would go on to it like that, I'm guessing, on it. A little bit of flash on that, but not much. I'm guessing this hub would go on like that to hold it on. And that's where you would have to grease these axles. They'd stop every so often and have to grease these axles from what I've read on it. Another part of the, one of the wagon assemblies or the triple tree assemblies. So these are all, it's like pretty much like the Revell kits that I've got there. The detail on them is pretty good for 1955. Another part of the wagon. The, it's got an erased ejector pin mark, no big thing, it's on the inside. Most of this is all pretty much the same thing on it. You can see it, it's triple trees, single and double triple trees. That's got a piece broke off of it that I will have to figure out. I'll probably have to uh, make me a piece of sprue and attach it to that. And we'll have to, we'll see where some of these parts go. It's more, uh, these are a different set of wagon brakes on it, which would be for probably the water wagon behind, being towed behind it because there's smaller wheels on it. And this is, I'm guessing, 
I don't know. We'll figure it out. Some more of uh, steps, side steps on it, an end plate for something on it. All of it's pretty much the same on this. This is not what I'd call a really highly... It's got some pretty good little parts in it. And they're all, you know, not too bad. So, and the single trees, those are double trees. They are a single tree. Uh, are detailed pretty good and have got the holes in it that are all cleaned out. No flash in them, no filling them up. Let's move this over here. Let's see what we got in this. This, this is the figures on this. This is what they supplied you for the harnesses on it. Either harnesses or the reins on it. Uh, there's a pretty long length of it. Of course, you got to figure. The term on this is 20 mule team, but it's a misnomer, like I said. Actually, it had 18 mules and two horses. So, But this would be for to run off all of the mules and the horses for harnesses. These are your figures on it. And what you had, the way these set is this set, this gen, this guy set on the lead, one of the lead mules, the wheeler mule on the very front. And this guy set on the horse that was next to the wagon on the left side. These guys would have been your bull whackers that sat on uh, the wagons themselves. They're really not too bad a detail on these. They're in a brown plastic, or brownish black plastic, where everything else is in blue. A little bit of flash. Uh, we'll have to see them a little better in some little better light. It'll look better when, once we get going on this. These are parts for something I don't know exactly. Looks like this one is possibly broke. Will have to be fit on it. The thing that's interesting: these guys are cast or were injector made with what appears to be some kind of saddle. I don't know if you've ever rode a horse, but if that's the kind of saddle they rode on across that desert on riding on a mule. Or a horse. I don't think I'd want to rode very far on one of them things. Said so these parts are so old. So there's there's well wait a minute forgot our string for our harnesses. So here's box number two. This one has been painted partially. I'm wondering if this is one. Oh, this is interesting. I'm wondering if this is one that my grandfather had started on. Really? It's kind of interesting. Because the hor mules are all together. And they were loose in there, so I'm guessing they've been no they've just been snapped together. They have been glued on this. And you'll notice on uh, this. All in different poses. And there is no directions in this thing, boys and girls. So we do have the other two that have been assembled. And one that has been assembled, even if it has been really kind of beat up. So what we will do is we will see what we've got in there. Well, I don't know if if you'll notice on these, these have got holes in them. I don't know if that's where you're, you can see where the harness comes down to right here. And I'm wondering if the way this was made is you were supposed to run that thread through here and then run it back off each one. 
So you would have a set for horsey or mule, something fell down. Okay. So what you would have when this was set up, you would have a set that come off this, run back, a set that come off this one, run back, a set that come off this one, and run back. So for a total of 18 mules and two horses. So that's kind of interesting. Like I said, I didn't know this had ever been started. I knew it was loose. The box was loose, and I never looked in it. That's why I put the blue tape on these, so I didn't lose anything out of it. Uh, apparently, we are missing some directions. Now, <laughs> you can go, you can find pictures of these things, and there is some color callouts on them. And they were painted fairly brightly. And if you look at a lot of things, like the medicine wagon I did, the tallyho coach, uh, the chuck wagon, paint wasn't so much for decoration, paint was for direct, uh, decoration at times, but paint was also a preservative, to preserve the wood. Because I, I've said in some of the others, and that one I posted today, you look at this wood and it gets dry, it rots and everything else, and it falls apart. So if you're uh, somebody out there that's only got one buckboard or one wagon, and you're trying to uh, scratch out a living, on raising cattle and growing some row crops, you'll take care of what you have. It wasn't a throwaway society like it is now. So there we have it for as much as we have on this. We'll have to play with it some more and look at it, figure out what's going on. We'll have to come up probably with, like I said, I think, I don't know, maybe I, I think maybe I will end up putting them in hot water to try to soften them. I'm afraid if I try to glue it and tweak it back into position, it'll just want to go back and twist it. So we'll figure it out and get it done. Okay, this is the last kit review and build video, or kit review video I'm going to do for a while. I have done a whole bunch, either done or reposted. This will make number 18 over the last 9 or 10 days that I've either reposted or done. So with the two giant, the one giant remodeling kit going on, the small remodeling that I have going on out here where I'm trying to do videos, I haven't had time to build anything. I have uh, an M113 for the Grim Jim build that never got finished. It's sitting there with the APC done and ZU-23-2 gun mostly done. I have a Pac-40 sitting there that is mostly done. I have an M65 atomic cannon I've started on. What else have I got? I have uh, my Nigel Wells group build that I have got uh, kit reviews done on it. I turned around and ordered two more kits to go with it, which I'll do when they get here. They're supposed to be here in a week or so. I will probably do a review of them. So that's not getting done. I have an M163 Vulcan gun system on an M113, which makes it the M163, that is partially done, that I haven't got any more work done on. So I am pretty much basically done making videos for a while. So I've got to get some builds done and get some more stuff worked on. A little bit on the um, Nigel Wells North Africa group build. If you remember, this is what we started with, with the Airfix kit on. You know, it snaps together pretty good. Not too bad. The walls are too thin. Uh, we discussed, I believe, it was, yeah, it was with Ion 757 about how this originally had been released as kind of a toy for uh, playing with toy soldiers with in this. And Airfix reboxed it and released it as a desert outpost for 132nd, 135th. So if you'll remember in the earlier video, this had been just squared walls on it. Now what I've done 
as you'll notice some of the walls are the double thickness that they will be on it most of them you can see the most of them you can see the lines on it where the double wall thickness is going to be this is for the Nigel Wells group build and as you can see this has got out of control on size I went from something that was just this big to that big because of everything I wanted to do now I could shorten it back up and still do some of it do it kinda of, sorta of the way I want but I have a rather large shelf that I can set it on out here where I'm at in uh, the small remodeling which is going to be my area for building uh, models and doing things like that as you can see I don't have the roof on it which is no big thing but I have everything laid out where all the beams go and everything else and I can look at the inside and say okay those windows go there that window goes there that's what I want it and I can look at it from the top down and say okay that's why I don't have it on now as you can see it's well held together with hat pins why or T pins because it's easy to take stuff off change it regroup it things like that if I don't like the way it is I can take a piece off put a new piece on cut it to size call it good now some of the terrain builders yeah, would probably say no you should be doing it this way or whatever but I'm doing it my way so there's what we have and that's part of the Nigel Wells group build for and it'll be part number four when it's uh, done in uh, taped and uh, put on YouTube by then hopefully I'll have the other two kits and we can get them reviewed and this will be done in clay this is not what it's going to be made out of the uh, foam board but I will use the foam board to give me my thickness on it which is figures out to about 14 or 15 inch walls which isn't too bad that's watching a lot of the movies that's about kind of what they uh, and on uh, military.com and some of the other videos of about how thick the walls are so there you are there is the final 1955 group build or not group build the final 1955 model kit build some interesting findings on the 20 mule team kit that we have setting here and as always this is go to ISM international scale modelers uh, website or forum very good place to go to uh, a lot of interesting things on there a lot of uh, good tutorials if you look at uh, if you go to some of the people or the people I subscribe to you will find there's some also very good tutorials on that on uh, weathering and model building paint thinning things like that uh, some very good people to go look at their videos on I don't can't remember all of them right now there's some a bunch but so go look at that and as always this is the pirate hunter and take care of yourself and each other